Yeah. Okay. Well, good uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this workshop on the role of civil society and volunteer organizations in contributing to integration policies at the local level. Are they a tool for social innovation? So I'm I'm John Paul Judson. I am the moderator of this Integrating Cities conference. As you know, it's spanned out over several workshops. This is the third of four workshops that we uh, that we are holding. And next week we will have our last workshop. And on the second and third of December, we will hold the uh, virtual Integrating Cities conference. So I hope that you are all registered to that. I will be there as as the moderator. And we have some exciting features that we will be uh, showing you uh, next week. But until then, we're, we're in working mode uh, in these workshops. The idea is that we try and create a, an interactive environment where people can feel that they can contribute and shape the discussion. Uh, it's a sort of a private meeting rather than a public meeting. And we're here to really learn more about what different cities are doing. Um, uh, in this specific workshop, we're really going at the heart of the of the values project, right? Which is all about volunteering activities to leverage urban and European social integration of migrants. And this is the framework within which the Integrating Cities Conference is, is operating. And in both workshops that we have had so far dealing with uh, the protection of uh, rights of migrant children, and also how cities are upholding human rights policies and anti-discrimination measures, we see that there's a big interplay between local administrations and organizations acting locally on the ground. And uh, sometimes uh, some NGOs are even saying that, you know, it could be better. You know, cities sometimes prevent certain cooperative activities to, to happen. So there have also been some criticisms, although it's clear that cooperation is the, is the goal. And so today it would be really interesting to, to hear from, from different cities. We have uh, four cities uh, represented uh, with Amsterdam, Cesena, uh, Sheffield and, and Nuremberg. And we will be hearing from, from, from those four. But I would also really encourage other cities on the line to, 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 to engage as well as we run through the discussion. It will be purely questions based, so no, no presentations. Um, and towards the end of the towards the end of this workshop, we will have a, a short interview uh, with uh, Kerry Hutton, director at Migration Work, on the lessons learned from the from the Values project. So um, you can interact in the chat if you want to uh, actually speak or intervene. Just raise your hand at the top of your Teams application. There's a hand like this. You just click on it, and that signals to me that you would like to. Uh, say something and I see that someone has already raised their hand testing it so that's good it works so today we will be discussing how city staff and volunteers can best cooperate to promote the integration of migrants what type of support volunteering organizations and civil society would need from local authorities to effectively contribute to migrant intervention integration sorry and we'll be looking at some good practices and lessons learned from the values project so are we ready are we keen to go? Good. So I would um, first like then to go to Amsterdam, uh, where we have Marlette uh, Schroeder. You are project coordinator of the Amsterdam approach for refugees. Could you just tell us a, a few words about about what you're doing in the in the city of, of Amsterdam? Uh, a few words is very difficult to start uh, because it's a very big approach. But in Amsterdam, we have a program since almost five years now, um, focusing on the integration of refugees from the municipality. And um, we do that from the welfare, sort of the background of the welfare law here, uh, the, the social security, so people that get social benefits. Um, and from that perspective, we help people in the integration. Um, so we take a pretty broad perspective. So we, we go on all different life domains. So it's both income, work and schooling, but also any other life domain like um, health, uh, mental health, uh, language, um, housing, uh, social integration, etc. Um, and I think from that perspective, uh, a lot of the social integration and participation in uh, our, our municipality, our city, our, our, our network, I think that is where the volunteer organizations bring a very big role. Um, so we try to connect. I think the main thing is also that we try to connect as many actors and sort of put as many actors in our municipality in a positive position and try to yeah, integrate the network as well. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go to Sheffield now. Colin, can you tell us a little bit, Colin Havard, Community Development Coordinator, can you tell us in a few words what you're doing there in, in the city of Sheffield? Um, uh, a similar problem actually to Amsterdam, I guess. Um, yes, this is a short answer. We have, uh, for refugees and asylum seekers, we have um, an array of projects, uh, one specifically around volunteering, but others around integration. And there's a, there's a, there's a uh, crossover in the middle where the two meet. Uh, we do some work also with with more general migrants, but that's uh, I have to say less developed in terms of its um, uh, structure and much more le uh, led by the voluntary sector um, or NGOs uh, than by the city council. Uh, but we I think our, our work on refugees and asylum seekers is pretty good. Um, and we'll come into this in the, uh, some of your other questions, but the Values Project showed us that actually maybe we're better than we thought we were. Okay, okay, that's, uh, that's good to hear. Uh, we now go to Cesena, where we hear from Sara Bagnoli, who's a social worker at Cesena's Foreigners Centre. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do in Cesena? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, first, I would say sorry for my English that is not so perfect like... <laughs> It's perfect. <laughs> okay, so, well, I, I work for a public agency that uh, in Cesena manages all service for foreign people, but not only foreign people, also old people, minors, and so on. Let's say all social services in Cesena, the most of them are managed by this public agency, which I work for. Um, I followed Valus project uh, together with my colleague of the municipality of Cesena, that is Sofia Burioli. This morning she could not be there, so I'm trying to represent both of their realities. <laughs> Let's say I'm the practical part of the, of the argument and uh, she is the institutional part. We, we share our roles like this. So um, every day I'm working with migrants, especially with refugees, because I'm operator in our reception center. And um, so we have um, first and second level of reception center here in our city. One level is just for uh, asylum seekers and the second level is uh, for uh, people that are in title of protection that could be um, international protection. Then we have also other kind of protection here in, in Italy, like humanitarian protection and so on. Uh, so uh, with my role, I helped uh, Sofia following this values project uh, in order to um, develop this uh, involving of the volunteering realities here in Cesena about this uh, this point that is the integration. <laughs> so okay. this is. Okay, so you're very much, very much frontline. So we'll yeah. be we'll be we'll be hearing from you on that. Uh, thank you. And then we'll we'll go now to to, to Nuremberg, the the, the co-host of, uh, of of this workshop and and conference. Uh, Elina Schnurer, you're working for the Department for Youth, Family and Social Affairs, the Directorate for Integration. Can you also say a few words about uh, about what what Nuremberg is doing with with this with the volunteer organisations? Hello, everybody. Uh, Nuremberg does a lot of uh, things <laughs> in the field of, of volunteering, so I'm here not alone. Um, I will be supported by my colleague, it's Fabian and Iris, and I saw Thomas is also here. So uh, to say honestly, I'm not so long in this project, and in but um, I have my experience in the field of integration of. Uh, migrants and uh, refugees and uh, yes um, I'm working in two departments so in Nuremberg uh, there is civic uh, uh, there's department for civic engagement um, it is um, in the administration of the city and uh, it means that volunteering will be supported on the highest level here in Nuremberg so and Otherwise, I am working also uh, by the um, Department of Integration and Refugees in Nuremberg. And uh, my task is uh, to coordinate all volunteering activities and all volunteers uh, in the field of integration of migrants. 
So um, in Nuremberg, uh, there are over 100,000 people who are um, very engaged and try to help other people. And it, I, I speaking not only about uh, people who are working in in the field of integration of migrants, it's their whole sum of people. So um, there are a lot of volunteers and they have always the possibility to make contact uh, with administration of the city and uh, to be in exchange of information. So it's um, what kind of we will know uh, further. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thanks. And 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 you're 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 talking about the numbers, and it's uh, it, it seems like there is a big volunteer movement in this field of uh, support to uh, refugees or migrant migrant communities. Um, if I if I go to to to, to Marlet in in Amsterdam, you, you have a you have a big uh, network there. H how how do you see volunteering supporting the integration of migrants? Because I imagine that there will be many tendencies or ideas within that group. It's not going to be a homogenous group. Every every organization will have its own view as to how integration should happen. So so how can volunteering support then the integration of migrants given this complexity and heterogeneity? Yeah, I think it's it's a really difficult question. I mean, it's a good question, but it's a difficult answer because it is so complex and diverse. And I think that's also one of our big challenges. Uh, also, as a municipality, what's the role that you take? We take a pretty active role as a municipality. So we, uh, I don't know, my camera is still working actually, but well, it has really... frozen. Um, oh, yeah, you would oh. you would need to oh, yeah. take it off and then put it back on if if you oh, want yeah. to try that. Well, I mean, as, as long you as you guys can hear me. Um, uh, so we take a really active role as a municipality. I think that's also in our DNA as a municipality and the social part of our municipality in general. Uh, and definitely since this program, we have really, um, yeah, taken a taken a very active role and taken a really big responsibility in this, um, which, yeah, gives a certain way, um, yeah, gives a certain way of, of of connecting to all these organizations as well. So I can imagine that there's places where. Uh, yeah, the municipality or the government is a lot less active, so you would have a lot more freedom and space and the, the volunteer uh, organizations have a lot a bigger role in a way. But we do really try to work together with these organizations. So in the beginning of our program, uh, we even funded, we did some subsidies, we funded quite a lot of, I think, 15 organizations uh, because there wasn't that much network, there wasn't that much infrastructure. Uh, for refugee integration yet. So we funded 15 organizations to start up and to help us in our approach and to work together. Uh, and we continue doing that to this day, but in different ways. Um, so we don't have an open subsidy call anymore, but we do work together with organizations that actively uh, work with volunteers. So we have uh, language buddy programs. We have, uh, well, we have a, quite a lot of organizations volunteers. Um, but it is still also, yeah, choices. I mean, you can't fund everyone. You can't keep funding everyone for 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 a long time. Structurally, you do have people that have a different way of doing things or a different approach to things. Sometimes, uh, we work our client managers or case managers, as we call them. Uh, they work from the uh, yeah the the law of the social benefits. So they also have certain laws and certain rules and certain targets that they are working with that might differ from how other people see it that work more in the volunteer direction. So there is a lot of dynamics always going on there, which is, uh, yeah, it's an interesting field and it's a dynamic field and it's, uh, it, yeah, it's it's a constant figuring out, talking to each other. And, and in the end, you all have the same goal and you all have the same ideals. Um, so you hope to to find each other in that. But when you say active role, uh, you, you mentioned subsidies. What what other what what, what does active role mean um, in addition to subsidies? Yeah, so uh, an active role means that we our approach, so the Amsterdam approach of refugees. Um, the main uh, point of our approach is that we have I would call them case managers or client managers, as they called here. So from the law of the social welfare, so everyone in Amsterdam who doesn't, uh, who's not able to make enough money uh, for a minimum, like a minimum wage, a minimum of around a thousand euros a month, can get social benefits. And from that social benefits, you also get some things uh, that you have to do, you're, you're, you're following our law. So you get a case manager um, that will help you to um, basically get back into financial uh, autonomy. 
um, which often means going towards work. But with refugees, there's a pretty long path that needs to be taken in order to get there for most people, because there's a lot of other life domains, like I said. So there's housing, there's language, there's family reunion, there's, uh, there's health, there's a lot of things that need to be done. Um, so our case managers, instead of only focusing on, hey, we're going to help you find this work, they're focusing on that entire line and that entire route for people from the moment that they come into the Netherlands and that they get their status to actually being both financial as on all other life domains, uh, independent and autonomous. Um, and instead of, yeah, so we take a really big role in all of those life domains and we take a really big role. So we have that ma that client manager who is, yeah, the, the main person who connects to someone and finds, helps them finding this route and also connects them to other organizations. So they will help find a language school. They will help find work. They will help find a volunteer organization that can help them with certain things. They will help find... Uh, the support they need if they have financial trouble, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that role and that person, that client manager is a very important person. And as a municipality also, which is more my area, is we would yeah, try to support certain projects and certain organizations that we find are instrumental to uh, the needs of the refugees that we're helping. Okay, thank you. Co Co Colin, uh, also maybe a, a comment on that on that same question then for Sheffield, how you're dealing with this with this complexity of uh, of organizations um, in the UK. I mean, there's a lot of self organized uh, <laughs> grassroots communities. So Mm. Uh, yeah, well, I guess we have a very different system here in the sense that our government is um, somewhat centralized. Um, uh, our uh, asylum uh, system is um, slightly slower, possibly. Um, but uh, in Sheffield, we uh, invented the city of sanctuary notion 10 years ago, and uh, that has led to a very strong um, voluntary sector or NGO led uh, creation of um, a network of, of NGOs, I guess, in the city. That the, 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 the municipality is very much seen as. Uh, the people that support that, not lead it. Um, there's a role for us in in politics, I guess, in some senses, and in lobbying for resource, but not necessarily in the delivery of the of the um, uh, of the support directly. Um, I think the and that's that's fine with us because actually I think that sometimes uh, that's the right way round. <laughs> um, we also have, I guess. A difference in terms of when you're allowed to volunteer, when you're allowed to work, depending on your status, um, and to some extent, our national regulations don't encourage uh, certainly the asylum-seeking uh, uh, population into um, into work. Um, but we have a very, I think, where the complexity comes for me is when we talk about migrants. So what we, you know, European migrants. Let's say somebody from Slovakia, Romania. Bulgaria, you know, who um, who would not see volunteering as part of what they would come here to do, um, and therefore quite often remain uh, separate from any state intervention, um, because they've come here to work and they go and get a job or they get a, uh, you know they rent a place to live and uh, and we would not even know they're here, because that's the other side of things is we don't have a registration scheme in uh, in, in the UK, so if you move to Sheffield we wouldn't know about you. Uh, until probably you end up registering for something, um, but then you're probably a statistic to me. So if you put your children into school, um, if I'm really paying attention, I might be able to spot that the numbers have gone up in one particular school, but unlikely. If you register for a GP, they're not going to tell, tell tell us that that's happened. Yeah. So uh, it's it's much harder for us with migrants to engage them in integration processes. Whereas with the asylum seekers, we find that actually they're really, they've come with an attitude that says we want to do whatever you're going to let us do. <laughs> and so therefore volunteering is something that they uh, they will actively engage in. Not always for integration purposes. Uh, and I think that there is, a, there is a, a whole load of integration work we do that's got nothing to do with volunteering. Yes, you you have the two the two facets. It's uh, volunteering for for migrants to integrate, and then the volunteering by people to support actions that foster yeah. integration of migrants. Right? We have these two yeah. facets that we need to deal with. 
Um, yeah. Maybe maybe a comment then from from Sarah in in, in Chisina, as you are as you are front line in 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 this. How, how do you perceive this this two these two facets? Yeah, I I totally agree with these two faces we have. And uh, one thing we um, one reflection we put out uh, during this project, but also I put out doing my job every day, is that uh, before to speak about uh, integration and how can volunteers support integration, we have to ask us what does mean uh, community for us because. I put out that uh, for us, let's say, Italian people, we, we give one declination to the sense of community. Uh, but, for example, if I speak with uh, one of our Nigerian guy, he has a totally di different sense of community, a totally different meaning. So, in order to uh, let vol volunteering be a key for integration, first we have to discuss about this. So why these sense of communities are different? Which are the reasons why this happened? Okay, we, we meet people that live in Cesena since 30 years, for example. We, have, uh, we are about to have the third generation of migrants. But still, these people think that their community is their country origin community. They don't believe to be part of our community. Um, and this is hard to say because uh, this is, in, in this, let's say in this sentence, I'm not representing the municipality, okay? I'm <laughs> representing my work because um, actually this is hard to say, but it's like this. In some sense, uh, they feel part of the community. I'm speaking about these um, third generation migrants because, for example, in um, in lockdown period, they um, they did a big, really big uh, economical donation to to the hospital in Cesena. They collected a lot of money between them uh, with the mosque, and they give a big donation to the hospital. So this was a, a sign of one sense of community. But in the other sign, um, every day in their everyday life. Uh, they, maybe they feel a different sense of community. So I guess that the role of the municipality can be important to discuss about this before to speak about uh, integration, because integration then it's a consequence about uh, this building of the sense of community. Yeah, that's a fair point. And I mean, there is a, there is a policy direction uh, behind all of this, which will which will orient actions on the ground uh, for sure. Probably also subsidies and where they're channeled. But maybe we can mm -hmm. we can get to that later. Uh, maybe also then a comment on this sense of community, Elina or, or, or your colleagues in, in, in Nuremberg and, and how that can maybe affect uh, the types of actions that are carried out in, in, in your city. So in our city, um, uh, there are different possibilities to be uh, uh, a volunteer. So there is a volunteer agency uh, which was founded by the city. So each person who is interested to be a volunteer can uh, make contact with the agency and it will be find a um, uh, deployment location for them. Uh, my role by the city, I'm there is a very nice word on uh, German. It means a uh, Brückenbauer. That's how uh, <laughs> it means a uh, bridge builder. Uh, so my colleague and me uh, and I we are uh, bridge builders. Uh, so we try to find um, um, this instrument to connect a city a municipality with a different uh, volunteers organization. So. Um, I organize, for example, um, um, such meeting uh, between different groups of volunteers in the city with um, different actors from the administration of the city to uh, um, exchange uh, with, in, uh, with information. So um, it works very good, um, but uh, uh, volunteers are are very active of themselves. They're very active without city too. <laughs> they have different um, 
groups for different activities, uh, sport, theater, and, uh, and if they need uh, support of the city, they have always uh, um, people who is responsible for them. So um, they have different possibilities and uh, the city uh, works the, uh, with different uh, corporations and um, uh, try to help everyone. Maybe so my, so th yeah. this agency is broader than just uh, volunteering for uh, towards migrants and refugees. It doesn't just attract migrants and refugees, right? It's a general agency supporting volunteering. Yes, but um, in the field of migration, uh, there are a lot of groups of people who help them. So um, it is also important that migrants uh, will be to volunteers too. So because um, I think uh, help is the best instrument uh, to be connected. It doesn't matter in what field of. So and uh, people who is coming to foreign country, they um, have fear because they don't know the culture, they don't know the language. And locals uh, who is uh, who, uh, who working as uh, volunteers, they grew up here. They have this mentality, and then uh, they know uh, the basics. And it is important that. Um, it will be build uh, such a network between migrants and vol local volunteers. So, and after that, migrants will be to volunteers because they know how to use this help. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also some. I mean, for for some at least, uh, they carry a big trauma, which also adds to the to the level of fear that they might uh, that they might have in arriving in in foreign uh, cities, not necessarily by choice. Um, uh, we have a we have a comment, uh, a raised hand from from Nina. So maybe we can take that now, Nina. Yeah, as we are in uh, Nuremberg, I uh, wanted to raise uh, a topic. I'm uh, uh, on raising also uh, in my uh, own municipality, which has more or less the same system as Amsterdam, and that is what should <clears throat> an authority want to know about its citizens. Should we know any personal uh, details? Because everything is going into an administration. And uh, I have the experience all over Europe that uh, countries who have witnessed the uh, Second World War and uh, ethnic cleansing are uh, very wary about taking this role themselves. As a social worker, I know way too much about my client. And a governmental social worker is, I think, a wrong concept. So I try to convince my uh, uh, colleagues to put everything with NGOs who are bound by a mission, by uh, a vision that will probably not change overnight. Uh, but we've seen with uh, Viktor Orban, we've seen with uh, Trump now, we've seen with the Kaczynskis in Poland, how quickly things can go. And then you may say, OK, well, we uh, uh, got Trump out of the way by the democratic system but uh, know very well that uh, Orban went the very same way the first time and next time he came back with a landslide uh, victory. So I think we should all very much uh, question ourselves, how do we use, uh, how do we treat our uh, ordinary citizens and why are we making this kind of exception? How deep in private lives are we uh, coming and registering? and really try to get civil society to do these things in order to keep people safe long term. Also because uh, we have to do with uh, regimes like Iran, etc., actively searching uh, for uh, uh, their dissidents. And I would not like to, after elections, to have a new uh, government saying, OK, well, we have this wonderful relation with Iran now and we are uh, pushing uh, our whole uh, uh, Iranian uh, uh, refugee community information to our great friends in Iran. So, so you're, in I'm a way, you're, you're you're supporting uh, what what Colin was also saying in terms of this separation of uh, you know government has its role in terms of getting resources, uh, lobbying to some extent, and then actually delivery of services carried out by 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 civil society. Uh, as I understand it, maybe Colin, just a reaction to uh, to, to, to Nina's point. 
Uh, I wouldn't disagree, really, and I guess uh, certainly as, as a country that's just been through Brexit, uh, or about to go through it properly, um, you know, it's uh, it's amazing what we can, uh, what changes can happen that you weren't foreseeing. Let's <laughs> say, uh, you know, I, I wrote a, a bid and I was successful in securing government money in 2016 um, for a three year project that got completely undone six months later. Um, who knew? Um, so I think that uh, we are we would do well to uh, ensure some uh, sustainability and, and resilience in, in our approaches. Yeah. Okay. So if if we go now a little bit more onto the onto the values project itself, uh, Marlette, you you've been involved. Um, can you tell us uh, maybe about one or two good practices in your city that you have identified uh, thanks to the to the values project? Yeah, it's a bit um, of a strange situation because I've actually been involved since very short. I see Kerry is laughing already. <laughs> um, so I, I took over for a colleague of mine and the other colleague who has been involved for longer um, couldn't make it today. Um, but the good thing is because I have been um, active with this program since the start, I do know all the um, uh, all the activities and all the all the good practices that they uh, they've talked about. So in that way, I think we not sure if we found per se new um uh activities but what i like calling you said it before that maybe you do better than you thought um and i really like that when i when i heard when i joined the the first group meeting and i heard also my colleague here in amsterdam how other cities responded to the the the, the networks and the things that we have in place and how almost amazed people were also the fact that with with things that we have that we find very normal which i found really interesting is one um, we have a digital or we have one organization that basically that has been around for years. It's definitely not only refugees or not only migrants, um, but their main goal is to connect people that want to volunteer to organizations where they can volunteer. So it's simple. Anyone who has a volunteer positions or is looking for volunteers um, contacts them and uh, also the other way around. So it's basically an online job market for volunteering uh, spots. And it's a very digital platform. So it's it's really an online. You just go there. I I mean I go on there quite a lot myself. Or if I'm if I was helping clients in the past, you would go together. You can just look, and you have um, contacts there as well that you can say, hey, now for instance, now we do more with refugees, and we have a lot of people that live in, you know, this local area. Um, do you have any organizations that can actively, um, yeah, find them and and contact these organizations? So I think the 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 response of other cities to this network that for us. And me being from Amsterdam and, have, you know, this has been around for years and we're so used to it. Um, it was really nice to see that apparently that's pretty, uh, yeah, a, a pretty good, uh, good practice that has not been, uh, is not set in other, in other cities. Okay. Okay. Thank you. In, in, in Cesena, Sara. So, um, Values Project gave us the chance to, to focus on uh, one that is, in, in our opinion, a really good practice that happened in Cesena. We, we was not thinking about to have a good practice, but uh, indeed we have. <laughs> that is, um, it's uh, called the Comunità Cogliente, Welcoming Community in English. We can translate. It's a group of different associations and organizations. We have Catholic Association, Voluntary Association, and also trade unions, for example, that put it together to answer to an emergency. Uh, that was in the winter of 2017, there was the housing emergencies that was affecting uh, especially um, migrant people, international protection uh, seekers that um, didn't have the chance anymore to stay in a reception center. We had a lot of people in that conditions, so these realities put together and they opened a dormitory, a dormitory that was managed just by volunteers. So it was very interesting because Catholic volunteers put them together with activists, totally non-religious activists. So it was very interesting to see this mixture of um, volunteering cultures that put it together to uh, give a, a practical answer to one, uh, one social need in that moment. 
After this experience, they went on with this project uh, and they're still going on with this project because Comunità Coliente now is a reality in the city. Uh, they went on facing the housing problems, so they, are, they managed the one uh, co-housing apartment, so they did uh, a small apartment with a group of migrants and uh, Italian students, because we have also university here in Cesena, so we have some people that are coming to Atan University, so they did a small mixed apartment. And uh, in, on the other side, they, they developed the um, unemployment problem, building a training course for, uh, for migrants that is like an engineering training course. Um, so they faced these two needs that in that moment was actually real in the city. Uh, in this way, so we, we can underline this as a really good practice uh, and also when we had the values visit in our city, this was pointed out from, from the other partners they came here. Um, so, of course, this good practice has some strong points and some weak points because the strong points can be their, um, the ability of this group of people to attract uh, uh, foundings, to speak with the institutions in one side, and also, of course, their diversity inside. But also we have uh, weak points, like the fact that maybe they are not so able to attract young people and to, um, how to say, uh, to um, exclude the risk to have this approach of volunteering that is more, let's say, a helping approach, a top-down approach, we can say. Okay, so uh, putting them together in a network of association, that is the thing that Values Project uh, um, moved us to do was very interesting because they put their richness in this uh, network, but also they learn how to face the weak points. So we can say it was really a good experiment for Values Project. Okay. I mean, first of all, yes, your English is perfect. And, sec <laughs> and second, uh, I, I'd be interesting to pick. I'd be interested to pick up a little bit on the on the issue of the religious uh, organisations in this framework of the volunteering. I might pick up on that a little bit later. Um, thanks a lot for sharing that. The good sides and the and the less good sides. Um, Ilina, if we go to, to Nuremberg, what um, what what good practice would you say you have identified through the the values project? Uh, to say honestly, I am just a few months in this project, so I couldn't make uh, experience with events and visits. But uh, my colleague, uh, maybe Fabian or Iris or Thomas, could uh, say more because they worked in this project the whole year. So, who wants? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I can go ahead, uh, no problem. Um, well, uh, we have sort of a problem uh, for identifying one good practice because uh, we believe that uh, in the last few years, also due to the values program, we've uh, we've seen a lot of really good uh, projects where uh, where migrants were were uh, either help through volunteering or they were uh, uh, they were working as volunteers themselves, which we see as, uh, as we said is very important. Um, because um, what has already been said, uh, especially asylum seekers that come here, um, they want to do something. They don't want to they don't want to sit and wait um, until their status is decided upon. They want to do something in Germany. It's not easy to get a work permit. Um, and so a lot of them actively volunteer. And uh, we think that's a really, that's a really good way to integrating people. Um, because you learn from each other's culture. Um, in Nuremberg, we have a lot of um, a lot of good practices about integrating uh, migrants through sport. 
Um, there have been some projects uh, making cooking books together with refugees. Um, so having these cooking books with recipes from from all kinds of cultures um, and also these people coming together, cooking together and uh, socializing. And uh, yeah, so we think it's uh, it, it would be it would be a bit unfair to to characterize one single or two single uh, good practice uh, projects because we believe that volunteers in Nuremberg uh, do a really good job overall. And yeah. You don't want so, a single single one out over, over yeah, another. Exactly. <laughs> I, I see that Thomas wants to say something. Maybe that will link up to Nuremberg. Then I will go to Colin, and then I'll pick up the questions from Christophe and, and Feyrouz. Okay. So Thomas, maybe yes. first. Thank you, Jean Paul. Just just a few words um, from from my side. So. Um, a specific thing in Nuremberg is that we have a, a large um, number of, of people that are working in the cultural sector and we have also some projects uh, related to the cultural sector, for example, uh, in, in the field of theatre we have a group um, that is um, that is working since a few years with refugees, but not only with refugees, but also with people from, from other European countries, for example. And we also do have um, um, a big number of people with a refugee background or other migrant background that are working in the field of cultural itself, like musicians or theater players or, or painters. And this is a very um, specific thing here in Nuremberg um, because our cultural department is working since more than 30, 40 years together with the, with the people from other countries in the cultural sector. That's what I wanted to, to add. And I think it was also involved in, in, a, in the values project. So that's what I remember from the visit last year when the values partners uh, visited Nuremberg last year. That's okay. My side. Sport, okay, sports sports and culture. Sports but, and culture. But many more, but many and, more. And cooking. <laughs> and cooking. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, I'll just go now to, to Colin because you, you say you were you were you know exceeded you exceeded your expectations, but maybe if you could also just focus on maybe on one on one good practice um that we that we could learn from. Um Yes, I think it was the so I've just shared a, a link to our um, online uh, volunteering thing. Um, our good practice, I guess, we have a central drop-in place uh, every Wednesday that is led by a coalition of um, civil society organisations, so not just one. Uh, it's called The Sanctuary, it's in the middle of town, kind of everybody knows where it is and everybody knows when it is, which has made it much easier to um, support people. So rather than saying, well, there's these 10 different things in 10 different places and and trying to get the new arrival to piece them together, um, then we've pieced them together for them. And um, we can tell everybody in the city, it's a Wednesday afternoon at the Victoria Methodist Church in the middle of town. Um, and that's that's made things easier. Um, so I think that's our better good practice. But also what Values did for us, um, we had a, there's a, a refugee who works for um, one of these uh, uh, organizations and supports uh, other asylum seekers and refugees into volunteering. And he was able to go to Terrassa on the exchange. And it made a huge difference because he suddenly realized he knew what he was talking about. And up until that point, although he'd been working uh, for three, four years, and we all thought he was brilliant at what he did, he didn't understand he was. Um, and uh, it has it's transformed the way he, he views himself and therefore what he's now capable of doing and, and how he supports other people. Um, and so, uh, and that, without that exchange visit, uh, we, yeah, we could keep telling him till, till we were blue in the teeth. He wasn't, he wasn't going to listen to us really. Um, and until he, he went visiting, he couldn't believe I was asking him to go in the first place. Because um, <laughs> I don't actually do hands-on uh, volunteering work, I do integration work. Yeah. Um, and, and so, I think that the Values Project has uh, therefore really benefited uh, Sheffield in that, that respect. Okay, thanks. Um, and I can see that there's plenty of exchange going on in the chat with links flying all, all over the place. So that, that's good. That's extra information. So, uh, Christoph has been waiting patiently. So, please, Christoph. Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Christoph from the city of Zurich. 
I'm in the same cluster, values cluster as Sheffield, so I know about the good things in Sheffield. Uh, my questions to the other three cities in this is uh, because our cluster is working with the very important idea that volunteering work is not only for migrants and refugees. What is more, maybe more important is maybe volunteering work by migrants. And uh, so I didn't hear anything about this now from Amsterdam, Nuremberg and Jesena. And I just uh, wanted to ask them, do you have any specific concepts to involve migrants in the volunteering as active actors, as volunteers? Okay, well, I think we'll take that straight away. Uh, we can start with Amsterdam. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, we do that quite a lot. Unfortunately, the people in our city uh, do that quite a lot out of themselves as well. So we have a few organizations in Amsterdam and in the Netherlands that are based on migrants being active themselves. So there's a, there's a Syrian volunteer uh, uh, organization. There is There are several organizations that actively work uh, yeah, with involving people. I think um, generally I was, I was thinking about that in general that we don't hear it as much, but involving people with a migrant background in everything that you do. So also in policy making, I think we we have that as a pretty high uh, value in our own um, own department and our own program. Um, but we also see see volunteer. I told you before that we we look at this 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 route of people from when they come here with a status. So we work with status holders, asylum uh, asylum holders. Um, and towards autonomy and, and, and self-dependency and, and, and self-sufficiency and in that route taking in all the life domains. And I think volunteering, we see that as a very um, important and useful instrument for people to, uh, yeah, to, to, to gain and to learn and to, to grow on several of these life domains. So social activation, participation, getting connected to the neighborhood that you live, the people that live there, uh, the city that you're living. Um, is a very big part of what we do. So we actively uh, help people, support people finding volunteer spots uh, and not just work. And I think what I would like to add, Colin, what you were saying before, the, the concept of centralizing and bringing groups together. And we've been trying that, but in a city as Amsterdam, it's too big. <laughs> and that's something that we've, we're always working on a lot, um, is trying to, and that's maybe also one of the challenges. On the one hand, it's really nice that there's so many different people being active and doing things, but on the other hand, it's also it's 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 chaos sometimes. There's so many so many organizations, so many things, and it's great, but it's also difficult to for people to find a, their way to find the right place for them. And uh, we work, we try to organize as much locally, so we work with social brokers, and I think that's also the role of the client manager that I said before. We're a little bit those social brokers that will we try to map out. Uh, the activities in local areas and have social brokers be in contact with all these different organizations that will feed the information to the people that are one-on-one -on -one with the refugees or the migrants and will help them find the right spots and the right connection. Um, so that's sort of, there. you, you have an ex a few extra layers, but it also has to do with the complexity and the diversity of, uh, of our situation. Uh, and actually, the last thing maybe adding, which is not volunteering, but including migrants um, and the population that you're working with, also in our own approach. So I think one third of our case managers and my direct colleagues are have a refugee background themselves. Um, so I think that's both in the volunteer organizations, but also us as a municipality, we really try not to be you know, the the people making policy and making this whole program for a target group that we know nothing about. But we have, I mean, we have colleagues that have come here in the last two years. I have several Syrian colleagues that haven't been here in less than five years that are working in our organization. So that's also something I think you can do as a municipality or government to, to go quite far in that and not, uh, yeah, keep that distance, try to organize a lot closer to the people. Okay, thank you. Maybe a, a, also a, a reaction then from, from Nuremberg on any initiatives that you're taking to support the volunteering by migrants to facilitate their integration? Um, in Nuremberg, the uh, most organizations uh, were created by migrants. So, with because uh, Nuremberg, Nuremberg um, has 45% uh, of uh, 
citizens has uh, migration backgrounds. So uh, these people who came to Germany and were integrated and try to help other people to be integrated. So um, there are, um, for example, there are theater group that were made by uh, refugees. Uh, there are a lot of sports, uh, uh, football trainers uh, who, mm, has, uh, who, who have um, migration backgrounds and uh, train other kids, uh, refugees kids. So uh, I wouldn't uh, call now, uh, now special um, organization because it could be unfair, but the most, most organizations were made by migrants. You would say it's sort of organic in a way. Uh, yes. It happened organically. Maybe then a quick, quick reaction from Thomas. It just um, just let me add uh, one thing. Um, we, we have also a, a small organization. It's a kind of an umbrella organization for migrant organizations in Nuremberg. And um, they are um, working in a project called SAMOFA. That means in English strengthening and supporting active members of migrant organizations in supporting um, refugees. And those are private organizations, I think, now there are eight or ten organizations, and um, they are supporting, especially in this in this field of of supporting uh, refugees and um, of, from from migrant organizations itself. Okay. And this this is also a project that is, is also existing in some other German cities. So it was launched by by the federal government, uh, I think, f three or four years ago. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that. And maybe a. Uh... A quick reaction also from Sara in Jezera. Yeah, first, of course, we have to say that we are a really small city and that uh, our migration background is quite, I guess, more recent than uh, the, the one you have in your cities, of course. But um, we, we have an example here in Cesena of um, volunteering made by migrants. Uh, that is this informal group that is called Romagna Migrante. Mm, Migrante is migrant and Romagna is our region. Um, Romagna Migrante is a mixed group of Italians, uh, young Italian people and migrant people that do activities together. They are very strong, they are very active uh, um, on this uh, main theme. So this can be a good, uh, a good example and it's a very recent example. In the other side, I can see we have um, in the municipality, we have programs to involve young people that are addressed to the school. And uh, so among these young people, we have also foreigners that uh, um, join this program. That is a um, program of uh, volunteering uh, in the, the summer period. Um, the municipality uh, takes the request to volunteering in the summer period and they address young people to different places in the city. So this can be very interesting. But in general, what I can see from my side as a social operator is that the most, the more natural thing is that uh, um, the first thing, if I am a migrant, the first thing I do when I arrive in a new place, I look for my community of origin. So, um, and most of the people go on doing volunteering inside their community. This is the. Um, the main phenomenon we, we can have. But yeah, we have also in our small city these good examples I told before that are good examples of uh, volunteering made by migrants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would I would imagine that the, the, the community is the, is the first place, the first port of call, and maybe maybe indeed that the question is how to bring migrants into, into volunteering situations that take them outside of their community. Mm -hmm. That's when you start to talk about integration. Uh, rather than sort of multiculturalism or something like that. <laughs> um, okay, well, th thanks a lot for having responded to, to uh, Christoph's uh, questions. Um, I think Feyrouz has been also waiting patiently. <laughs> yes. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Feyrouz, working for Eurocities, and I had more of a comment uh, related to one question you just uh, asked, Jean-Paul. Um, 
and like uh, not now but a bit, uh, a bit before uh, about the good practices in the cities um, through values that we didn't identify through values and I just wanted to to come back on re one really good practice that for me uh, struck me during this visit since we are participating also in the visits in the cities and in Nuremberg for instance one thing that really uh, came out of the visit I would say and uh, there's other cities that were there like for instance Bristol so if I'm I'm wrong just uh, just uh, you can comment also after me but uh, it was the fact that uh, there's these award ceremonies that the cities is uh, uh, organizing every month to actually award uh, the volunteers themselves on, uh, on and to to put their work on uh, at the at the front um, and yeah to award them and so I think it was something that we really liked during the visit and that we really picked out uh, picked up with us and so much so that in Bristol actually they decided to organize their own award ceremony uh, last February um, and I think Liz is here if she wants to say a few words about about it. So yeah, it was just a, a comment to, to add on the good practices that we saw during uh, all these visits through values. Yeah, I'd be happy to hear from a couple of other cities on the line, especially um, partner partners of the project. Liz, do you want to say something? Or, yeah, sorry, um, yeah. I didn't find the raise hand button. Um, yeah, just a comment on what Farouz had said. We were really inspired by Nuremberg, and that's exactly why we set up our own um, volunteer celebration event. And it was, yeah, it was really successful. And I hope that it'll be the first of many to come. But um, yeah, thank you to Nuremberg for giving us the idea. Okay. Um, uh, do, 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 is there another city that would like to take the floor? I mean, I'm thinking, uh, you know, possibly Dusseldorf, uh, Riga. Uh, we've heard also a little bit from Zurich, but uh, if, if there are any other uh, projects or good practices that you would like to highlight in this field. No. OK, um, what, one of the things I'd like. Oh, sorry. No, we have we do have a few a few hands up. So let's go to uh, Joy. I think that's Dublin, right? Let's go to Dublin. Hi, how are you doing? Um... Yeah, it's Dublin. Uh, thank you. <laughs> it's been very interesting for me to hear some of the stuff you're doing. I'm working uh, within, I'm working for the city council, but within a very small local community. And we're at the very early stages of uh, setting up an intercultural ambassador program. And I suppose the idea behind that is um, developing migrant leadership and volunteerism within the community um, and looking at empowerment, like volunteering with an empowerment uh, aspect to it, that there are people within the community who have a zeal for volunteering, but actually that as they volunteer, that there is a, a leadership aspect to to what they do and there will be a learning program in terms of learning about interculturalism learning about the local community and there are several actions then um in that year so they're signing up for a year-long program uh, and in that year of volunteering you know some of it will be action based like volunteering in a local service and some of it will be um or the options their options but it's really about matching the persons to and their interests to what the gaps are within the community. So it's very tailored. And I know that the volunteering uh, center in Dublin, uh, which is in our local area as well, has a fantastic um, volunteering for learning English um, program that they encourage uh, mostly students, but also people who have moved, newly moved to Ireland and they try to match them with volunteering opportunities that don't need a high level of English language, but that in the process you can actually uh, learn English. So that's been a very successful program um, that they do, and that's targeted specifically to people from migrant backgrounds. Yeah. Okay. Th th thank, thanks, Joy. Uh, actually, before I give the floor to, to Miriam and, and Larissa, I, I'd actually just try a reaction from Marlit because I imagine that, you know, Amsterdam being such a huge city, 
um, you know, a, a quick reaction on this concept of, you know, the the, the empowerment and, and having some some symbols uh, of, of integration through volunteering. C can you maybe comment on it in a city of Amsterdam? Has has that emerged? Has that has that happened? Are you are we talking now mostly about the um, sort of the celebration and, and putting? Yeah, are there, are there the... symbols coming out of a, of a city like Amsterdam that that have been communicated that that are well known um, from all the work that's been done from all the from all the people that have transited through through Amsterdam? Ooh. Um... <laughs> Uh, I thought I'd try it, you know, I don't want to take yeah. it on the spot like that. Oh, but, uh, well, you are taking it on the spot, so that's <laughs> all right. It's an interesting question. I, 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 uh, I'm thinking about it. Well, I think in general, what we said before, I, I think it was, uh, Lina, you said, right, that the city is, is basically 50% is migrants. I think Amsterdam, it might be higher. I think we, for years, hold the hold the award of having the most different nationalities in one city. And we say huge, but we're actually not that big. We're, we're one million million inhabitants so we're actually a very small city still but uh so i think i think our whole city is a migrant city i think we have a very big long cultural heritage of being a migrant city in all ways so also if you talk about well we, we said this all before but about well yeah, yeah our migrants also volunteers yeah half of the organizations are they all have yeah. migrant backgrounds i i was talking about one third of our my colleagues having a having a refugee background, but there's definitely also a third that has a migrant background because it's it's very difficult to find someone like me who's 100% sort of white Dutch heritage. It's almost non-existent here. So I think uh, I think our whole city is a little bit that uh, that okay. signal that you're talking okay. about. Okay, and, and Dub Dublin is on its way as well. So okay, um, then let's go to uh, Miriam Lableni. I think that could be Toulouse if my memory serves me right. You can unmute yourself. Um, yep. Sorry. Yes. Hi. Um, I am uh, Miriam Labligny. I'm working uh, on Toulouse City Council. Uh, I am a European project officer and uh, I'm working on the values project. I uh, can quickly share some information about the work uh, of Toulouse and Values. Uh, for its part, the city of Toulouse works a lot with associations and organizations that employ social workers who intervene with the most fra fragile population to accompany them in their search for housing, employment, schooling, and access to healthcare. And we also work with voluntary associations. For example, um, the City Council um, works with the uh, Unicity on the um, Melting Pots program. The Melting Pots program is aimed at young people between 18 and um, 25 years of age in civis, civic service, uh, like uh, volunteering for a period of uh, six to eight months. And the group which respects parity is made up of uh, 24 young people. 12 of them uh, are French speaking and 12 are allophone. And uh, the volunteers are uh, of Rome culture or uh, beneficiaries of international protection. The, uh, the aim of the program is to use um, this uh, volunteering to facilitate the inclusion of allophone and break down prejudice against them. Uh, the volunteering, the volunteers benefit uh, from in-house training or training provided by Medicine du Monde uh, on the health system and the French school system in conjun conjunction sorry, with the French national education system. Uh, then um, this then enables them to give and raise awareness of health and education issues among uh, people living in squats, chain towns, social hotels, or requisitioned places. We are currently working on the development of a partnership with the Melting Pot program in order to benefit from mediation with migrant families accommodated in the 
early childhood structures and to help uh, fragile families to access this service. Uh, we are also working on setting up itinerant child parent places in squat, tiny towns or hostel. And uh, we would like to work with the young vol volunteers of the Melting Pots program in order to facilitate our exchanges and our contact with the families. Uh, to explain just quickly, the Child Parent Care Center it is um, like a daycare center for young children under three years old who are not yet in school, but parents stay with their children and benefit from the games and the facilities found in the daycare centers. They also benefit if necessary from the advice of early childhood professionals who are on the site. And this allows children who are cared for by the families to meet other families, other children. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks also for for sharing that the, the family uh, the family connection we had a, we had a, in the first workshop uh, a, a discussion around also the the importance of foster foster homes uh, to to facilitate integration. So that's an important reminder as as well. Thank you. And then we have also a reaction from Larissa Orlovich. Yeah. Hi everyone. This is Larissa from Düsseldorf. Um, so thanks to the speakers for everyone. Um, it's very interesting so far, and I enjoy listening very much. Um, I well, Düsseldorf is in a cluster with Amsterdam. So um, hi, Marlitz. Um And so we're focusing on uh, volunteering in um, well, on the neighborhood level. Um, so integration in communities, and uh, we have a big challenge that we try to reach volunteers um, that are not um, well affiliated with bigger organizations. So uh, volunteering in Germany is very institutionalized. Um, they're organized in the so-called welfare organizations and other smaller organizations. And um, we're currently working on um, developing an overview of all the organizations there are, and also a database in which uh, individual um, volunteers or people who are interested in volunteering can, can reach. So. Um, I checked out the links for the databases already. Those are very interesting. Um, and my question would be how uh, these databases are managed. Are the, um, well, the individual organizations that offer volunteer positions, do they edit the website or do they edit the, um, yeah, the, the database or how does it work or is it centrally organized? Uh -huh. So I suppose it might be different for each database. Um, yeah, how do we do this one? Um, do we do we have a quick a quick reaction? I mean, I guess Amsterdam, you probably know the answer, but I don't know. Maybe maybe we can start with Amsterdam and and then move to Nuremberg, Amsterdam. Uh, and what ex what specific question? The, the, how do you organize the database? Yeah, is it uh, is it is it very centralized or is it rather decentralized organization editing and? Yeah, it's centralized in the way that it's it's too dynamic to keep up. There's too much uh, changing and 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 yeah, as I said before, we, we try to work with social brokers that are working on a on a local level, so on a neighborhood level, um, and also these social brokers they. They work in a way that they work in tables um, based on themes that come from the certain neighborhoods. So in one neighborhood, for instance, there's a lot more elderly that have different needs and different, uh, yeah, different needs and uh, for support that would need also different, um, uh, yeah, volunteer organizations or other organizations. I mean, there it's not only volunteer. Um, so commissioning from from the municipality, we're talking about commissioning. So in the one neighborhood in New West, for instance, we have a very big migrant population from certain uh, countries of or origin that might differ from another neighborhood, um, yeah, age, et cetera, et cetera. So in these local tables, focus on themes. In the one, low literacy is a bigger problem. In the other, loneliness is a bigger problem. In the other, uh, health is a bigger problem. And we try on the basis of themes, focus like mapping on the one hand and also commissioning uh, different organizations and different um, groups. And what I really like in this is that one of the big targets of that, those sort of social broker tables is also 
um, that helping people with an ID to actually start up initiatives and start up activities is also a big focus point. So it's not only seeing which organizations are already there, but it's also if one woman in the inside O says, hey, I, I really miss knitting and I would love to knit together with other people, um, but I don't know how to do this. That could also really be a focal point to say like, ah, oh, this is actually something there's there's a lot of migrant elderly women that are sitting at home that actually might need this. Let's, you know, connect you to someone that can actually help you and facilitate that. Um, so I think I would call that decentralized. Um, but yeah, then also we tried as much as possible centralize it in a way as well database wise so people can find it so for instance the the link that i already said in the in the chat but also i have to think about uh, illiteracy so in basic skills or literacy on 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 sort of calculation uh, digital skills and language skills we have an organization that's a network platform uh, connecting actually the libraries to municipality and that has a really nice website uh, that tries to really actively um, yeah, make a database of all the initiatives there are locally. So if you are a migrant and you say like, hey, or even if you're not a migrant and you need, you say, hey, I, I, I want somewhere to learn digital skills or I want language classes, you can go on that website and you can find anything in your neighborhood and you can sort of put on and off like check boxes going like, hey, I would like one-on-one -on -one, or I would like a volunteer, I would like to have, you know, conversation classes, or you say, hey, I would like to go to a local library uh, where they would have reading together and then you can find the dates and the times. So that is uh, something that we try to sort of centralize the database on, a, but the, all the activities are on a very local level. Okay, thank you. Uh, it sounds like maybe there's some database projects that could be interesting <laughs> within within EuroCities. I'm, I'll, I'm sure I'll to, it, yeah. to, put, to put databases together maybe or Okay, um, we're, we're, we're going to getting to the end of this of this exchange. I would like to uh, wrap up with our with our panelists, let's say, with a little challenge for them. Um, so what is the most important lesson you learned from the values project? But I will only give you essentially 30 seconds. Okay, so the most important lesson you learned from the values project. Can I start with Colin? Damn, I was just going to uh, piggyback somebody Pre else's answer. Prepare, yeah, I know, I know. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> so are you ready? 30 seconds. Um, so uh, I actually have a prepared answer, so there you go. Um, <clears throat> the barriers and challenges in different cities will always be there to hinder the support for migrants' in integration. But the policies, guidelines and equal access to the financial support structures put in place by local authorities has played a great role to minimise the negative impact migrants face. And so what we're really saying in all that is that um, we can do something uh, as a city to change the, the impact that happens. So sometimes it feels like you're powerless, that actually there's not a lot you can do, especially in, in the civil society organisations. And what it's helped us understand is that we are more in this together and that actually we have different strengths and weaknesses. And, and the more that we join, join up, the, the better we will be in uh, affecting change. And um, seeing others do that and do it well, whether it's with a database or with other things, um, is uh, actually quite useful to, to remind us that that's what we need to keep doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Colin. It was a little over 30 seconds, but I, know, it was a, I can't a, do 30 seconds. An important, 30 seconds is challenging. Uh, let's go to uh, Cesena. Sara, are you ready? the most important lesson you learned from the Values Project. Yeah, OK, we very quick, we can say that we learned that um, a good practice exchange is really a key for social innovation. We did it at the European level. I guess that for a small city like Cesena was a, a really important thing to do it. We grow up a lot because we we applied these uh, good practice exchange also at our local level so um, this permitted us to meet uh, different realities and to understand that the only thing we have to do is putting them together then the things come out uh, <laughs> to contaminate them so i will say like this yeah let it let it grow organically okay yeah. thank you thank you thank you sarah uh, let's go to Nuremberg. Elina. Yes. 
30 seconds. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I think the most important lesson that we learned that we have to learn from each other because we have all together the one girl is to help people to be integrated in our society and there is no city that is only one community and we are the actors can who can do this and we have uh, to reflect our work and to learn from each other it's the most important lesson and to have this transparency fantastic 25 yeah. seconds well done thank you thank you so much elena <laughs> and uh, now we go to amsterdam Marlet. I think what I'm going to take out of it most is, is the point that we do the least, which is also actually no, noted twice, is, is uh, celebrating the volunteer organizations. I think we do a lot in support and commissioning, etc. But I think this is something we do a lot in our in our support to the people itself. But we, we just the actual celebration, just the actual thanks. This is good. This is great. We're enjoying this, that part. And I liked in values that... Um, yeah, you give people a bit of a platform to also say, hey, there's all these European cities and we're going to come to your initiative and show them this and we're, we're appreciative and that's good. Not just uh, instrumental, but also just the personal. I think that's something that we can do a lot more. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marlette. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Elena and the colleagues at Dussel at uh, Nuremberg. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, Colin, um, uh, for, for sharing your views. I would like now to invite uh, Kerry uh, Hutton, who's Director at Migration Work and has been working with the, with the Values Project. Uh, maybe just a, a reflection. Let's just start with that, a reflection on, on this morning's discussion in relation to the Values Project and, and how you see the, the main challenges when involving volunteers in, in actions on, on migrant integration. So a reflection, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of echo. I'm not sure what I can do about that. Um, nor I. <laughs> <laughs> Often it helps if everyone puts out their microphone. It's often yeah. resonating with someone else's microphone. So maybe yours, jean -Paul. Let's try. Does that sound any better? No, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> feels, feels, feels. Uh, yeah, this is, are you registered twice, Gary? Are you in two devices? No, One no. Another? Oh. No, you are actually. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> apparently you are. <laughs> Try that. Yeah, remove yeah. one, that sound one of the meeting. <laughs> yeah, it's not echoing now. Can people, is that okay? Can you just tell me? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, okay, so reflection. I suppose a, a kind of general reflection um, is that uh, I'm always struck, and this morning is no um, exception, by how valuable it is for people just to talk to one another and share examples. So when people are working in their cities and getting on with it, um, that it is very easy just to kind of accept the norm and carry on doing what you've always done. And actually these projects do shake things up a bit and help people get new ideas as we've heard this morning. Um, I guess one of the things just to point out is that we have four themes for values. Um, these projects always have themes. Those were very broadly, they were about fostering a welcoming culture, they were about innovation, they were about cooperating at neighbourhood level and about young migrants. Um, and for those people who, uh, and we're going to have a toolkit on each of those themes, so one reflection as well is that some of these good practices that people have been mentioning will be highlighted and profiled in that toolkit um, alongside benchmark standards. Um, but I guess, I mean, another reflection, I suppose, which I'm, I'm, I'm aware today that we've got um, a, a certain, we, we haven't mentioned the dif differences in a way between different cities. And certainly in, in the cluster that I was working in, which included Amsterdam and Dusseldorf, we also had Thessaloniki. And of course, what you're able to do vis-a-vis -a, -vis a volunteering agenda is very different when you have huge numbers of people who the city is is dealing with to a certain extent the 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 managed flows of asylum seekers and refugees and to a lesser extent migrants into northern cities is not always replicated at, at southern level but all the same um we found some excellent good practice there and i suppose i just draw attention to five points that kind of struck me the first was 
um, how how volunteering um, that there was in some places in some cities there was kind of assumption that volunteering is something you do to migrants and refugees and asylum seekers you know it's a service really that one can can involve people in particularly around the welcome level but the value of volunteering as an integrative force in and of itself was um, really striking in some places and a lovely example that uh, another director of migration work provided me with from from her cluster was in Madrid where um, there people arriving people are not asked about their skills and experience they're not assessed in that way instead they're asked what they want to do and the the point of that is about kind of twisting it through from you know think, seeing a person as an asset or a resource base for the city to seeing somebody actually have an offer they can make to the city uh, and a gift they can make to the city. Um, and so a specific example where was where when they asked uh, newly arrived um, asylum seekers or refugees what they wanted to do, a doctor, for instance, decided that they wanted to volunteer in a dog's home. So, you know, that's all about the person's wishes, not just the person's skills. Um, and and we found in other places as well, I mean, young migrants, for instance, being an asset um, and young migrants uh, who in Bristol, for instance, who befriend newly resettled families and help them get orientated. These people arriving are people with a whole host of not only skills and experiences, but also um, desires and motivations which can really build the city. So that integrative force of, of um people being active participants in the volunteer programme was something that I think struck some cities. The culture of celebration, the second point is the culture of celebration and, and actually volunteering is not necessarily, um, was not necessarily the norm in places where people originally came from. So the whole business of, of celebrating and communicating about the value of volunteers and what the city and the municipality feels about volunteering and how it views it is not just nice, it's kind of really important and, and communicating that strongly. Um, well, you've already heard this morning, people have picked up on those examples and, and, and kind of replicated them in their own city. So we heard that in, in, uh, in, in Nuremberg, picked up by Bristol, Riga, Chisena, Sheffield, and so on. Um, a third point I just wanted to kind of highlight that I think popped up in a number of clusters was about the, I mean, it's it's said in so many places, isn't it? But it's about the involvement of uh, migrants and refugees and asylum seekers, not just in doing the volunteering, but also planning and delivering the services and evaluating what's going on and making sure that they're really in there so that the, 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 the services or the opportunities being designed um, are being shaped by them. And there were some lovely examples of that in Oslo, I witnessed. Um, uh, again, in Bristol, uh, I heard a young man was able to maintain a relationship with his youth club by returning as a volunteer barber to offer free ha uh, haircuts. But but actually being in the, properly dis properly consulted with is, is um, is vital. And then the fourth point I just wanted to make was was about investment. Um, you know, volunteering, uh, people volunteer their time, but if a city is going to take it seriously, it's not free. <laughs> so, um, so adding value to how volunteering happens by some investment. So for instance, doing leaflets on volunteering or some of the stuff we've heard this morning about investing in coordination. Um, or sometimes actually investment uh, investment of, of time by the municipality um, to, to volunteers um, and send them letters and invite them to be volunteers. That was another thing that came up. So investment of um, the municipality in volunteering is another one. The final one I just wanted to say is that, you know, volunteering in all places happens in a context. So it's on a continuum there with community participation, with community involvement um, and with local democratic structures. And so um, looking at the structures that you have in the city and kind of asking yourself the question whether or not those are sufficient for involving the community in all its diversity, including refugees, migrants and, and, and asylum seekers, is um, one of the things that I think, certainly in my cluster, they got out of it, partly because they were looking at local local um, engagement but 
if you have those structures in place, what you need to be doing is seeing whether or not those structures can in some way incorporate the volunteer power of refugees, asylum seekers and migrants um, who are joining your city. So, for instance, um, an entrepreneurship scheme in Oslo uh, was was there and, and then began to encourage young migrants to come in and have entrepreneurial ideas for the city. So a young Palestinian guy, for instance, ended up doing a recycling project um, in, in a neighbourhood. But but that was an entrepreneur scheme which was there already, which actually could kind of encourage people in. Um, in Thessaloniki, they have a state radio, um, a state radio, city radio, municipal radio station. And there, um, local uh, my, refugees are invited in and they have a slot there where they broadcast to the city. Um, and I think one of the, I mean, this has already been mentioned, but the, the, the social broker scheme in, in Amsterdam was really one which I think we were very uh, struck by when we were there. Um, because these are people employed by the municipality and we, it, we met one of them and discussed with them what they do. And they said that they were the eyes and ears of the city. They go out into local neighbourhoods. There are there are local neighbourhood centres, physical spaces for people to get together is part of that infrastructure that needs to be there. And, uh, you know, these social brokers, are, they're doing lots of things. They're advising people, they're signposting people and so on. But they are also picking up on. Um, where it would be useful to develop new schemes, where it would be useful to think about um, uh, developing new opportunity, volunteering opportunities um, at that granular neighbourhood level. And that's all about having an infrastructure in place, actually. It's about having those neighbourhood centres. It's about having those social brokers. So the importance of that to consider alongside, you know, volunteering doesn't exist in a vacuum. It needs to be overlaid on the city infrastructure in that way. So those are the reflections. Well, oh. thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kerry. I think that, uh, you know, that leaves people with, I think, many, many thoughts, many interesting thoughts. The, the thought that it leaves me with, if I, if I may, is that volunteering in a way is a sort of a it's the first circle within society where, in principle, you should be with people who have the right open approach. But then beyond that, we know society is pretty harsh. <laughs> and so uh, I would imagine that yeah, volunteering must have that, that role of bridging that gap between the harsh realities of society and the first step of integration. You know, So uh, maybe that's, that's what it leaves me with, uh, those, those thoughts. But I'm sure uh, others will have their own. In any case, thank you very much uh, for, for having shared that to, to the four panelists as well. Uh, and I will now hand over to uh, Rosella. Uh, who will provide us with the conclusions. Um, thank you very much, everyone, to, to be here and to share uh, your good practices, your ideas, uh, and uh, also what, what you learned. Um, I have to say, I, I think we concluded very well with Kerry. Uh, she some, uh, summed up a bit uh, um, what we learned from the Values uh, Project. And uh, uh, for the moment, I, I would say that uh, uh, in Eurocities, we talk a lot about mutual learning and peer reviews. And every time it's like people ask us, but what is it? I think today we could see what it is in practice is uh, inspiring, getting inspira inspiration and, and ideas from other cities, uh, tailoring them, adapting them to uh, each local context. But I think in a way is uh, also uh, kind of uh, um, a better understanding of what each of us do, each city does on uh, on the ground. And I have to say, I think it worked uh, a lot as a confidence boost because many of you said uh, we learn and we realize that we actually do greater and, and better than, than, than we thought. Um, so again, I think uh, to today, uh, it shows how cities and uh, citizens and migrants are so active and willing to um, take part in initiatives and projects to uh, actually improve the social inclusions and to create a sense uh, of community. Um, a reminder for all of you to uh, please uh, register if you have uh, you if you haven't done so to our uh, Integrating Cities Conference, uh, the main uh, the high level event on second and third December. 
because during those days we will also uh, show a video uh, about the values uh, project so you will see some of the images uh, today we heard about stories and uh, uh, you will hear also uh, about some you will see some images that are always uh, a nice uh, a nice additional tool and and um, some of the 